what is the story, right? Mm -hmm. The story is there is no chaos, there is no catastrophe, there is no darkness that can't be broken by the light. Like there, there is no, this thing can't get so far gone that it becomes irredeemable. Mm. That doesn't mm. mean that it can't get very far gone. Right, yeah. You know, that doesn't, yeah. and I think that's what, that's what pains us. It's like, how bad is this thing? Like, it's like, we're almost testing God's redemptive power sometimes it feels like. This mm. is getting so insane. Yo, what up? This is Tech, and this is a very special Dis Disrupt 50 Deep Dive. I had the pleasure to sit down with John Guerra. John Guerra is a singer, songwriter, producer, composer, uh, leads worship. He's led worship. Uh, now he leads independently. He's led worship with Vertical Worship, which was the worship group for one of the biggest churches in the country. Uh, and he's um, just all around good dude. I ran into his music through, <sighs> always forget the name of this podcast. Come on, help me, 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 help me. The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. They played a song at the Rise and Fall of Mars Hill, and I, I was done. And so I, I had to sit down and talk to him. I, I, I really think you guys can benefit uh, from this conversation. He said something to me in that conversation that I will never forget for the rest of my, the rest of my life. It was, it was, it was uh, very insightful. Also, on a side note, you want to hear something nasty? All right. Stay focused, squirrel. But listen, before I had the interview with John, I was like, hey, I don't want to be stuffy, right? So I take some some uh, nasal decongestant. Stupid though, stupid though. Nasal decongestion, what does it do? It decongests your, your nasals. So I mean, me and John, we have a great conversation. I'm into it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm so into it, I don't even notice there's a big blob of just snot. Like, you think my tie was bad? Wait, you hear? See, snot tie. So, John, I'm sorry, you had to go through that. Uh, I don't want to put you guys through that. So, there will be a part in the video where it's just a graphic. That's just to cover up the big glob of. Okay, it's nasty. All right, serving the Lord gets nasty. I don't, I don't, I don't know. That has nothing to do with it. But I really do think you guys would. Uh, would enjoy this. Gonna be doing some more sit downs uh, as well. So let me know what you guys think. I will meet you in the conversation. Let's continue this conversation. All right, God bless. All right, I am Tech. This is another episode of Disrupt the Faith Podcast. I am here with, uh, you know, I really enjoy having conversations with wise people. And I mean, this is the first time we met. I don't know. You could be the smartest man in the world. I, I don't know. But there's a wisdom <laughs> in your music that I think that we could all, and in your perspective that I think we can all benefit from. John, how do I say your last name? Pronounce it right? You say it Gera. Gera. Like Sarah, like Sarah with a G. John Gera. Singer, songwriter, producer, John Gera. How you doing today, John? I'm doing so well, Tech. How are you? I am doing all right. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you. I need to talk to you about Citizens. Citizens, uh, I, have, I have not cried that much listening to a mm. song since uh, At the Cross. Do you remember the Hill, Hill song? So oh, yeah. at the concert, I think I was sitting, I was like watching porn or fornicating or something. And then I, I was listening to At the Cross. I was just like, God, I'm nasty. And then, uh, uh. you know, that, that just took me out. Citizens, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into it, and, and the whole album really, really, really uh, struck me to the core. But John, for anybody who may not be familiar with you or your music, how would you describe yourself? I would describe myself as a devotional music singer songwriter. Mm. Um, and I sort of have made the distinction. My music is a little bit better suited for like a Monday morning prayer rather than like a Sunday morning congregational music. Mm. Um, not that those things, obviously those things are not in tension with one another, but we are, we are in different places mm -hmm. on Monday morning. We're, we, we kind of, we receive things differently. Um, when we're not in church than when we are in church. And um, I just have, I've wanted um, to figure out how music and how art and our experience of art, um, you know, it's so meaningful to so many of us. Mm -hmm. You think of those times songs just find you. I remember the first time I was a kid, I, I, just music grabbed me. It just mm -hmm. it gave me relief. It gave me comfort. It gave me so much. And 
wanted to figure out and felt a calling to figure out how art and poetry and songs can help people become more attentive to God mm. and become more aware of him in the world and him in our lives. And so that's what I mean by devotional music. It's kind of mm. birthed in kind of my devotion to God and trying to meet, trying to spend time with God and figure out, well, what if I, what if I have an eye towards God and pleasing God rather than pleasing an industry or pleasing the radio or pleasing even fans? Not that I don't care about people who listen to my music. I do, but what if I just think about God when I'm writing and, um, what if I think about how, wh what if I think, what, how is this going to help people engage with God? What if that's the rubric? Um, so that, that's kind of my ex experiment uh, that I've been really doing for, I'd say since this last record. Yeah. So I started writing that 2016. Um, so for about four or five, six years now, I've been kind of exclusively focused on that kind of thing with my own music. Right. I, I produce other people's stuff and still co-write quite a bit, and, but my own personal music is is that devotional. That's a, uh, I mean, that's a, a fancy, way, a fantastic way to put it. Because when I listen to your music, it, it does for me. It's like an icebreaker to a conversation with God. Like I think about truest praise, mm. and then it's mm. like I could just put that and just be like, God, I'm sorry, I'm trash. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it just, it just starts. Uh, <laughs> It, it helps start a conversation or articulate something that I think sometimes uh, a person could feel that maybe not have the words to say. And mm. uh, that, that definitely has been the case for me with the song uh, Citizens. I, I first heard mm. Citizens on Mars Hill, the, the rise and fall of uh, Mars Hill. Yeah. I, heard, I heard it at the end of that. And I was like, man, this song sounds cool. And then I decided to to play the song. And it's weird because I felt like my spirit, it registered with my spirit before it registered with my mind because I'm listening mm. to the song. And I'm like, why am I, why do I feel a thug tear getting ready to come out? Like, why am I feeling this type of way? And so I just, by the by the time I got to the end of the song, I was at a full fledged, okay, I'm not gonna have a meltdown in my car. I'm a grown man, collected, get it together. But it you in in that song, you articulated something, some things that uh I just could not ex I, I couldn't find the words for. I, I mm. literally had to force myself to listen to the song over and over again till I can get through it without crying. Till I could, <laughs> till I could talk about it without crying. Like, uh, wow, man, it, wow. It, uh, so, but what inspired you to write the song? The, the, the song citizens. Um, man, it was a buildup of I would say um, surprise, frustration, pain. Mm -hmm questioning um yeah i i woke up i remember i forget what the date was and i had a and i don't usually talk about this stuff so frankly but i mm. you know i i will um because why not <laughs> um woke up woke up with a uh text on my phone mm -hmm. and it was the day after the um 2016 election mm -hmm. and I my wife and I had gone to bed we thought you know we don't we, we see how this is gonna go we wake up and I wake up from a text from a from a friend and it, all it said was Trump won <laughs> I got you uh -huh. and um it was it was just very wild mm -hmm. it was a, it was very wild for me and um I was very embedded in a I was embedded in a in a, in a large church with a lot of really beautifully loving people a lot of people who really just want to do their best to mm -hmm. be obedient to christ and to love him and to um, serve his church and and uh yet i just felt there was a lot of people at that church who were just like seeing no cognitive dissonance between just full full-fledged support yeah of this political candidate and the, you know just just the usual things we've yeah. people have unpacked it way smarter than us who've you know, dissected it to kingdom come. But, mm. um, you know, my uh, my background is I'm a first-generation 
American citizen. Mm. So my dad's from Cuba, my mom's from Argentina. And my dad is a pastor of a Hispanic congregation mm. in um, suburbs just outside of Chicago. And so he's always been a pastor of kind of more, uh, well, really poor congregations. Mm. Um, grew up knowing a lot of people whose immigration was up in the air or um, whose status as legal citizens were up in the air. Um, we, you know, I never asked those questions, but it was kind of like, well, you know, yeah, yeah, you just kind of, and, and my wife also is a, she's a social worker. Mm. So she's, um, has served refugees in Chicago really since before we were even married. So almost 15 years now she's been working with refugees. So that combined with, I, I also am a worship leader. You know, I love singing songs to God. I love all kinds of songs. You know, I, um, um, and I, you know, I'm very grateful also for the evangelical church yeah. and the immediacy of um, the experience that, you know, evangelicalism, I think, has kind of brought. Um, it's sort of like, no, this is a decision. This is something between you and God. Like, what, what does it mean to you? That immediacy, I think, is very valuable yeah. in the life of faith. And so, you know, put all that thing in tension, uh-huh. 2016, and I just... Uh, I just, I just about exploded. And so I sat down at the piano that day. Mm. My wife was at work and started this little kind of frenetic piano thing. And, um, and then over the course of the next three, four days, just kind of worked my way through some of those emotions. And that's where that song kind of came, came from. Yeah, that, that is interesting because I know, I know for me and, and for, uh, um, a fair amount of people, even uh, like African Americans that I know, I I grew I grew up in church. Uh, I grew up on Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagee, Ron Cannoli, Maranatha, Hosanna, like uh, you know. And these are the people who I who I learned Christ from. Who and mm. so I know for uh, for me and for a fair amount of people, it was just the hard contradiction that like Mm -hmm. and you know and and some people really ended up walking away from the faith because if this is if this is the people that you learn christ from and Mm -hmm. this is this is acceptable it, it, it just seemed weird and i know my personal struggle with that and just going through this transition with just how i view church i'm just not sure if this is what christ died for like mm. The way we do church, the 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 like even listening to uh, the rise and fall of Mars Hill, I, I I mean Mark Driscoll, yeah, you could say he was the problem, but he to me and that whole situation is a product of the way we do church. It's mm-hmm. that's just, that's just the culture of church. So like when you mm-hmm. said I have a heart for the questions, silencing all my suggestions. Um, and, and you know, for a while, I had just did a, a, a YouTube video around the time that I heard the song. Just did a YouTube video on somebody that had uh, left the faith, and that person was pretty popular. So because that person was popular, in turn, the video became very popular. And so I was mm. pushing out these uh, these videos and content, but the the dissonance of like the things you say, like some of the struggle, my struggles with evangelicals and just the way that we view church, it caused me to kind of shriek back on mm-hmm. doing things because it's like, yes, I believe in God, but I don't feel safe with the system that I'm encouraging people to go to. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. If, that, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so totally. and for a while, and this song really helped me kind of get off of, of the uh, get off of the bench because it's like I do believe God, but I'm sure people have had experiences where you got someone saved and you told them about God is grace and mercy, and then you brought them to church and they were just completely turned off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, I believe in God, but I, I personally struggle with my faith in the system that that we mm-hmm. call church. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's. I think. I think that just means you're very, you're very normal Christian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I. I think there's a lot. Yeah, church is really. 
it's it's two it's really two institutions in one mm. right mm. the church is a spiritual reality the invisible church christians throughout the ages and then it's a very human reality yeah. um it's a human institution and as humans we are if we have a, if if we have a perfect track record at something it's screwing things up for sure like, <laughs> and and I still, you know, it's, it's a question I've always wondered. Like, if I was God, I wouldn't trust me with his reputation. Right. Yeah. yeah. Why does, but Jesus does. Yeah. Which, which both tells us about the character and the, the, you know, loving kindness, the patience of God, and just the crazy, 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 um, crazy opportunity that we have of either making much of his name or of, of really dragging it through the mud. Um, something that really has helped me is being familiar with uh, different traditions, mm -hmm. you know, different Christian traditions throughout the ages. I studied historical theology in college. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I loved learning, and that's really been a constant source of um, hope, is that the church has looked so different for 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, you think, for me, I, I didn't know much about anything really about church history growing up. Thought it was like Jesus, the apostles, and then some stuff, and then Martin Luther was in there somewhere yeah. between like one AD and fifteen hundred, and then Billy Graham was a guy, and then you know the Bible Church on my block. Like, right, but yeah. there's a lot of space in there. Like, yeah. what happened? How did the how did this faith get from Palestine, Israel, here? Yeah, and. Uh, and it's amazing. It's like, clearly, clearly God loves diversity. You know, clearly he is okay with us kind of Im improvising in different ways. And, um, you know, when I've, when I've found that my own tradition, Protestant evangelicalism is get, gets a little distasteful to me, or, um, I, I find myself unable to see past my own, uh, my own, I guess, distaste of it or something yeah. i find it helpful to kind of oh man what what are the what do these older traditions say or mm -hmm. you know what are you know it's, it's easy for us to point out oh man catholics have these doctrines and we don't believe that yeah. orthodox over here um but there's also a lot of beauty in those yeah yeah faiths you know mm -hmm. those old and for me i found a lot of solace in um yeah in, in just kind of remembering and even and even drinking from some of those wells, you know. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. No, that's a that's a that's a good point. And, and and in some ways, I did find comforted. Like I've uh, I haven't done a deep study, but look, like looking at Christian history, I have found comfort in their. I don't know if disorganization, not disorganization, but their dysfunction as well. Yes. Which made right. the current dysfunction make sense. Like, oh, we've always yeah. kind of been like <laughs> this here. And so, <laughs> no, it, it is helpful. I just, I, I wonder, and I was thinking about this and maybe I'm just going dark. It feels like the Pharisees just got saved and just like, <laughs> they. No, I don't want to say the phrase, Jesus wins, God wins, but it feels like the Pharisees just got saved. And that, uh, I heard this great quote. Uh, uh, they were saying that we as American Christians always see ourselves as in, in the richest nation in the world. Mm -hmm. We always see ourselves as Israel, but never Egypt. We always see ourselves right. as the disciples, but never the Pharisees. Yeah. And we would be much closer in my mind to the Pharisees than, you know, than anyone yeah. else. And, and Jesus Jesus came and he criticized his church and the church had uh, the, the Pharisees at the time, I guess, had so much arrogance yeah. and they, they considered themselves to be so, so synonymous with what it means to follow God that they considered his criticism of them blasphemy and crucified them for, it. you know, it's just wild. Yeah. The son of God can't even come and correct his church. And, um, you know, yeah. Sometimes I get too cynical. I'm trying to be. Do you see any hope? I guess because I mean, like I said, maybe I'm going dark. I, I don't. Like people say, I can't wait for Jesus to come back. I'm slightly nervous for him to come back and to find out. Like, 
this is what we did in the time that he's been gone. Oh man. So I, I do have hope. I I'm with you. I'm naturally a, um, I, I kind of have a depressive personality. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I mean, it's like a, it's like, it is like a physiological thing for me mm-hmm. and it's an emotional thing. It's like, I, I, I can be a Debbie Downer for sure, mm-hmm. but I do see hope for a variety of reasons. Um, I still believe that God is somehow, despite us working benevolently towards our species, mm-hmm. by, I mean like humanity, right. um, I just, I, I believe in the heart of God so much and i'm i'm comforted by um i'm comforted by christ by who he was when he was here because basically what it says to me i mean what what, what is the story right mm-hmm. the story is there is no chaos there is no catastrophe there is no darkness that can't be broken by the light like there there is no this thing can't get so far gone that it becomes irredeemable. Mm. That doesn't mm. mean that it can't get very far gone. Right, yeah. You know, that doesn't, yeah. and I think that's what, that's what pains us. It's like, how bad is this thing? Like, it's like, we're almost testing God's redemptive power. Sometimes it feels like this mm. is getting so insane. Um, but I really, you know, wow, that's good. I'm, I'm comforted by the fact that Christ was completely poor, a completely nobody, completely rejected by society. So it's like if society goes to hell in a handbasket, yeah. if the church, the, the physical institution of the church goes to hell in the handbasket, well, we, we, we still have Jesus, you know, yeah. and, and the, the poor in spirit still have Christ, the, right, the, right. the brokenhearted, the like, there is no, yeah, it's, it's kind of a wild God is wild. I mean, he can do, this is also kind of, this is crazy to me. Like, I think, I think we, we sometimes, we somehow get this idea in our head because we do need systems and we do need theology Mm. and we do need order. Some of my favorite people to read are analytic philosophers Mm. because they construct such a airtight system that for my kind of artistic, chaotic, it's like I like to think my mind and my world is like my hair. It like <laughs> it it just goes everywhere uh-huh. no matter what. Yeah. And so for me to comfort myself or to kind of organize my my soul sometimes I need like I need analytic philosophy. Right, I need these people so who are very organized. But sometimes we think because those are the people who write books and those are the people I think who who run our churches and you know sometimes run our cities and like run our institutions that God is that way too. And mm. yes, God is very organized and God God is very peaceful, but he's also very wild. Yeah. Like when Jesus came, they didn't recognize him because no one could have imagined that God was possibly redeeming the world through this one poor, humble guy. Right. Like, wow. you know, it's like, yeah, but we have temples and we have systems of religion and we have Pharisees and we have Sadducees and we've got Roman, we've got kings. Certainly God's going to use that. No, 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 no. It's through this one guy yeah. and his followers and and this very peculiar linear lineage of redemption that included prostitutes and mm. included um, sons who had been rejected by their fathers yeah. and in, in, in included um, a, a, a history of a group of people who almost were like virtuosic in their rejection of God's care yeah. for them. Wow. Like, and it was like, nobody could have anticipated it. So, so it's like, it just makes me wonder, well, where is God working now in the world? Because because the fact that Jesus came, died, and rose again, w- w- that was like a rainbow over all of history mm. that, like, God is not going to give up on us. Like, oh, he cool. was, mm. Christ, Christ is, the, is the promise over all of mankind, over all time, that God will not ultimately reject us. Mm. Like, there will be an ultimate redemption. And so if that is true... Well, where are the seeds of that? Where is the evidence of that? Maybe it's not on the platforms. Maybe it's not on the stages. Maybe it's not in the spotlight. Maybe it's actually where God has proven that it's been all along. Maybe it's in the shadows. Yeah. You know, maybe it's in the gutters. Maybe it's, um, and so and so that's that's kind of, you know, that's where I I, I 
I think when I think, man, this thing, how how bad is this thing going to get? Well, maybe I'm just looking in the wrong place. Right, like, yeah, that's good. No, that that's that's deep. That makes me wonder. Like, again, just smack me in the face. I wonder <laughs> if, like, all right, this is going to sound like I'm like I'm blaspheming, but I'm not. I'm gonna break it back. I wonder, and we we've had this conversation on the podcast before, but I wonder what gives the current local church and structure that we do church, the copyright on what it means to be a part of the church, if that makes sense. Mm. So it's like, uh, if you're not, we say that the church is, you know, not just Sunday, but if you don't there on Sunday, then technically you're not considered to be a part of church. Now, I do think there are certain things that need to be done. Like we need to be in fellowship with one another. We need to be being yeah. discipled and discipling. We need to be finding ways for people who would not normally get together to come together and to be equal and one. Um, I guess I wonder is the the current church and structure of church the only way to do that? Like I have right. ADHD. And so like yeah. – Technically, I should be taking medicine. Squirrel. But I just, you know, I also got anxiety. So I think if I take it, I'm going to die. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what my what my therapist was telling me is like, hey, this is the best form of treating ADHD that we know, medication. Uh, but also what Google was telling me is all the side effects of what what happens. Now, maybe, you know, you shouldn't listen to Google, but I think like just like ADHD is probably the the best form. I mean, just like ADHD medicine is the best form of treating ADHD, but it also has the most side effects. And hmm. I think our current hmm. structure of church is the best way to facilitate and do and get those things done. But it also has the most negative yeah. side effects. I, I wonder yep, if yep, we yep. need to think about a different way to be the church outside of what we currently call church. And I know I would probably get stoned for that, but, I, you know. No, I couldn't agree more, man. I couldn't agree more. I do know what you're I do know what you're talking about. You know, the emphasis of a good thing can so easily become overemphasis. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I'm a firm believer, you know, and I'm a pastor's kid. I get. Yeah, I and, and I even I do love church and I think there's something valuable about committing, even just going on Sundays, even when you don't feel like it. I, I get that. Yeah. But sometimes you got to stop. Like yeah, yeah. if you know, if. Yeah. <laughs> and and what you're saying is 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 crazy beautiful. You know, getting together, service, getting together to encourage the book. You know, the point is not the thing itself. The point is, um, yeah, the, the, the point is there's something we get with people that we can't get alone. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, there's something that happens when we are um, submitting ourselves to something bigger than ourselves that doesn't happen when we are kind of the... the solo autonomous kings of our own universe yeah these are things that nobody's going to disagree with um but sometimes we we have to i'm even okay calling it our own weakness like mm. i just cannot look past this dude on the stage wearing a stupid hat every week like yeah. whatever it is yeah. you know i remember <laughs> this is me being very ungracious the first time i went to a church in here in texas there was a dude who just he was wearing a, a Stetson cowboy hat, you know, and oh, it wasn't because yeah, yeah. he was a cowboy. It's because he was like a hipster wearing it. It's like, yeah. and I just, in my mind, I was totally, I was just rotten inside every time he'd come on stage. Yeah. And I just, for my own, I, I couldn't get past the hat. Yeah, yeah. Now that's not his problem. He can wear whatever he wants. Like, yeah. that's my problem. But I had to remove myself from the situation and find a different you know, right. think we were in a place where he just we had just moved to Texas and, you know, we were looking for churches. So thankfully that wasn't, you know, it wasn't a big deal that we left that church. But I think sometimes removing ourselves from um, the point of 
stress and frustration is is actually quite healthy. Um, I think what people sometimes talk about, and, and I've seen this happen more often than not, and this deserves to be said, is that f- when friends of mine have taken that break from church, mm-hmm. man, I just need a break. I can't. Mm-hmm. It seems that I more often than not, it seems they never go back. Right. And I think that's what people are worried about. Yeah. For good reason. Yeah. Um, so I think I think the pausing with a plan is better than just the you know what I'm I'm a little chafed so I'm gonna pull out because I think there is something valuable about like you said I don't know what else it's like might not be perfect but you know what else are we gonna do I mean there's other things to do but again right. like are you really the person who's going to consistently organize people on a Tuesday night to come to your house, yeah. deliver the word. Yeah. Do, you know what I mean? It's yeah. sort of like a, which I think you're, I think, I think we all acknowledge, you know, especially as you get kids in the picture, you're kind of like, you know, with my daughter, I'm like, oh man, I, it, it's just a hard question. Cause I, I want to spare her from the circus and from the shenanigans right. and from the moralism and the, but I also, I want her to be in a, um, I want her to be in an environment where it's, where, where goodness, at least some semblance and some goodness recognizable by you and by me and by, it is easier than not, yeah. you know, ideally church is a place where it's, you're not looked at strange for wanting to, um, be good, yeah, yeah. you know, for, yeah. for, for wanting to. For, for wanting to admit you're weak yeah. because God is like, it's so hard to admit you're weak in the world. It's so hard to, you know, and ideally it church is a place where um, there are different values at play. Yeah. And for my daughter, for my, you know, two year old, I, I want that for her. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I work at a church and I, I, I thank God for it. I think my experience is a lot better than yeah. other people who I know who work at church. A lot of a lot of my friends work at churches. Uh, I haven't met a, a Christian, uh, a, a person yet who feels like working at a church is good for your spiritual walk, um, <laughs> <laughs> who, who would recommend it for a new believer. You know, I, I think... Right. I, I know of, like, some people, and I, I'm an introvert, so I don't know if I do, but, like, some people, I, I know they do, like, Zoom calls throughout the week, and... Um, they kind of like different people do fellowships and Bible studies. They maybe and they do it all across the country. And then maybe once a month they'll get up uh, in person. All the people in the Zoom call they'll pick a city and they'll go there. Mm, cool. I think that's great. I don't think because we have this idea of church, people would say that's great, but that's not church. And I'm like, why can't that be? I mean, because I mean they're fellowshipping more than most believers do, and even mm-hmm. I think when churches did do home groups, they did them as a kind of like a sneaky way to get people back to the Sunday, not as a genuine mm. way to break fellow to make fellowship. So I think if we really cared about it, we could figure out right a, 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 a better or a turn away a turn away. To me, church is like a. I mean, maybe it sounds bad, but church is like Smoothie King. Smoothie King is probably healthier than McDonald's, I guess. But <laughs> should that be the basis of your only diet? Like, mm-hmm. it's like the, the definite right. I don't think so. And yeah, see, and now now we're talking about something I'm very interested in, which is, um, you know, human beings are meant to be intentional creatures. Mm-hmm. We are not meant to go with the flow like because you know what is what is the universe when it goes with the flow it's it's entropy right Mm -hmm. it's and it it's Mm -hmm. it's it's in a it's in a state of breakdown we are dying you know Mm -hmm. talk about debbie downer (laughs) at this very moment you know we are closer to dying now than we were when we started this podcast (laughs) that is a very true true thing you know um so but we're given strength, we're given wills, yeah. we're given intention. Yeah. Um, my, I, I am generally a happier person when my life is more intentional than when it's not. Yeah. 
um, whether that's exercise, whether that's eating well, whether that's date nights with my wife, whether that's um, writing songs regularly. And to the degree that church can be a function of one's intentional spirituality Mm -hmm. and intentional devotion to Christ, it is is healthy. Mm -hmm. But like what you're saying, I don't think it could be the only thing. You know, it'd be like saying, I eat one meal a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I eat breakfast on Sunday morning. It's like, well, you're going to die. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. not, you know, it's, that's literally called, we have a name for that. It's called starving yourself. Yes. And so I think intentionality, um, what one byproduct of maybe the form of church that we've all kind of been a part of the last, I don't know, hundred, I, a long time yeah. is that we see the church as the people who do stuff and then the people who receive stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and really that, that the, someone who does something and someone who receives is a, is a dynamic at play, but it's like us and God, God does for us and we receive from him. But at the same time, our role, what is, what is, you know, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We're so scared of that verse. Cause like, well, I, you can't earn your salvation. And suddenly we're, people take that verse and they, they pull you into an argument about earning your salvation and that's not what he's talking about at all. Yeah. He's like, this is, we gotta, we gotta work stuff out. Like we need to, we need, we need discipline. Yeah. You know, we, we need, we need to have regular habits mm. of, um, you know, being with God of, of scripture. I, and they're very basic things. Prayer, scripture, um, you know, even fasting yeah. and in my, in my life, it's because I'm an introvert too. Silence. Yeah, you know, yeah. when I wake up before my daughter and I'm in the kitchen with my Bible and it's quiet for that hour, that is a very healthy hour for me. Yeah. Like objectively so, you know. Yeah. And when I'm living those things and when I have a healthy, um, and I'm so, I'm, I'm not great at this. Like everything in me works against these habits. Yeah. But um I, I'm I'm happier when I am engaging with them, and then church becomes sort of like, oh, this is like an additional thing, yeah. um, and and then my life becomes my life becomes more of an outward focus thing too. You know, I'm able to serve my, I'm able to be in a good place when my daughter does wake up, yeah. and um, I'm able to kind of serve my community. Like we we do this thing on Friday nights where we have just a Friday night dinner and kind of like open invite to like our community. Oh, wow. And sometimes it's very exhausting and I'm very, I, I'm not good at hiding my emotions. Right, right. You know, so when I'm in a bad place at that dinner, it's just like, oh man, I'm, yeah. My dear friends know like, okay, John, John either had a bad day or he just doesn't want to do this. <laughs> but um but it's really good that we do and I'm able to be more present to them when I have, you know, been engaging in, yeah. you know, our call. I, it's like we, we, because it's so easy to sit down and watch a show or just go get a snack or something. It's like, we think that that's actually what helps us. But I think both of us are old enough to know that that's actually not what gives us energy. For sure. Um, For sure. <laughs> I, I I take I think about that and even transitioning into the topic of worship, uh, um, because I you were I know you were a part of a, a big church and um, the, and you can tell me if you think think differently. I I, mm-hmm. I I have that thought too as well, even with worship because I I, I just did a video. Um, is is praise and worship overrated? And not that mm. it is not, not that it is not important, not that it is right. not um, a necessity. But I think the benefits of it, being in the presence of God. I mean, it feels amazing in the presence of God. It feels amazing when God is there, when He's speaking to you, like all your worries, fears goes away. I think the fact that it feels amazing is the reason why we prioritize it over other things that God has explicitly yes. said he wants more than our worship. 
Like he said, he would wow. rather us feed the poor wow. than us sing, sing him a song. But we have a we, and again, not that it's a, a anti it, wow. but we have a whole section cut out every week of just like hear my songs. But we don't have anything cut out of. Yo, I, I, let's let's do justice before we have this sermon. You know what I mean? Let's wow. And and it's just I feel that's that's wow. Yeah, I, I wonder like, I, and again, it's the benefits of it is why I feel like we prioritize it, if the, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Well, and I think I think we even got to be careful to equate the presence of God with with the experience of praise and worship. Mm-hmm, 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 you know. Mm-hmm. It's a full, it, 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 the presence of God can be simultaneous with the experience of worship. But I think one of the reasons why God wants us to engage in these things that are not on the surface giving us the good feelings that music does, I think the reason why He wants us to serve and, is because there's no other way for us to realize that the presence of God is actually available in those places too, wow. just as much as it's available in the feelings. It's like, wow. there's really no other way. You know, it's like that cliche, you don't really know mm. God's all you need till God's all you need. Right, yeah. And I do think there's no other way to know the presence of God is permeating every fabric of reality in this very moment without without almost decluttering our emotional and, and feeling life. Yeah. And sometimes that means turning off the praise and worship music. And I think we gravitate towards it because we are a very sensual society mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, um, and it, and it is a good thing yeah, and it is, it is a, it is a lovely thing and it is something that unlocks something I think in all of us. And, um, but it, it's, it's also a very strongly physical experience, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like, and it's something that we are kind of benefiting from, um, on the surface versus, service or it's like (laughs) yeah it's like yeah it's like it's like those things those things are not on the surface things that are going to make us feel good right away um though there's joy in it you know but it's like you don't advertise it's like there's a reason why people churches Mm -hmm. with the with the greatest music do have more people than churches without it it's like because people want that yeah you're totally right on. I, I, I'm laughing because I think about like, you know, Scripture says God loves a cheerful giver. And uh, like, and like you're right, like we don't get that same feeling. Like I, 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 I used to like have a praise and worship band. And so it's like I'm familiar of how much a piano with a pad makes people feel like they are experiencing the presence of God. Mm-hmm. And it's like. And and just that whole, I mean, uh, maybe uh, I'm I'm getting too cynical with it, but I, I think about like uh, all my interactions with people who are poor. God has never asked me to to hey make sure that person is poor before you give him money. You know what I mean? He's never been like. <laughs> and so sometimes I, I just can't like if I see someone who's poor, uh, I have to give them something, I, and. I'm laughing because my heart is not right. One time I gave this lady, she asked me for some money. And before she even finished, I was just like, here, take it. Because I knew that God was going to make me do it. And so I I say that because I need to work on, like you said, getting to a place where I should have joy in that. She was probably like, man, Mm. you are the meanest, nicest person (laughs) I ever met. But I I don't have joy in that. I don't like Mm -hmm. giving what's mine to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I don't feel great after it. Now, if we put on some worship music, I mean, I don't want to say it cost me nothing, but really it didn't Mm. cost me a lot, but I received a lot from it. And therefore, I love it. But I think... Um, if as believers we spent more time like working out those those other keep you know, keep the worship part. It's not that we need to get rid of it. It's the other things that we also need to right. elevate to its proper place. Like right. it's it's so weird to me that God could say, I want you to do something. Like yeah, that we could be singing songs and God's ears are like covered up. It's just like mm. I really, I really don't and again, we never think that that could be us. You know, I doubt right. that. 
Amos, right, right. oh, you know, the Northern Israel thought, what? God doesn't like me singing? He loves it. You know, this is what he wants. Right. But no, we never, you know, I, I wonder um, if, it, if his ears are, are closed a lot more. I guess for you leading worship, what was the most encouraging thing you saw? And what was the most maybe discouraging thing you saw that maybe most people would not I, I, yeah, what was the most encouraging thing you saw in worship and then what did you find to be kind of discouraging maybe discouraging is the right word but disappointing yeah. I guess hmm I guess the most encouraging thing um You know, it's, it, it's very personal to me. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there are times when I'm leading worship where I feel like I have almost these experiences where I'm, I'm kind of like flooded with love for people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in a way that doesn't happen to me often. Um, especially, it, it, it's happened before at places where I'm kind of like, I don't like these people at this church. Maybe I've, maybe I've been, maybe I'm at a church that I, they brought me out, you know, to do a concert and to lead worship. Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty normal thing, you know, but maybe I start getting the sense that it's a church that's very, not a church I'd want to be at. It's it's sort of like a, and so then I'm, but I'm, I'm there, I'm contracted and I, I'm like, no, I can lead these people. We're here to worship the same God. And, but I just, even when I'm singing, I have this sense of almost like annoyance with the people yeah. or I don't know. I just, I'm kind of cranky with the people. Yeah. And then something as I'm singing, I'll just kind of like, it's, it's like a flip happens and suddenly I'm flooded with like love for people. Mm. Nothing's really changed, yeah. but mm. For me, being in that moment, I that that is like it's it feels like pure grace to me because it's like I'm maybe experiencing a little bit of what God feels towards even people who I find to be um, annoying to me mm-hmm. or something. Um, so almost like that in when I'm because I don't you know I, I as a some people really love worship uh-huh. music they really love the style they love the um and i don't dislike it necessarily but it's not it's it doesn't really do much for me personally right, yeah. um i like different kinds of music yeah. like different kinds of things and it's probably reflected in the music i write yeah. it's like i i enjoy just different colors different textures so for me it, it is a bit of a service thing mm. um I have a talent to do something and I have a skill set with music and especially in, there's a church here in Austin. They didn't have anybody for a long time. And my wife and I were attending, it was a small 50 person church. And, uh, so the pastor asked me if I could get up, set up the PA system and lead some songs on my guitar. Wow. And that's what I've been doing for a couple of years. And, uh, but I don't like it. You know what I mean? Well, like, yeah, no, I feel you. Which I actually, well, now that I'm saying, I actually realize I don't think I've ever actually admitted that in, in public before, but I, it's, yeah, it's not like a, um, so for me, that service piece, when God meets me it in that service, it is very encouraging. Uh-huh. Um, discouraging, um, discouraging when I feel like I'm facilitating something that's just like a, um, emotional ecstasy or something guess, that well, yeah. to me doesn't feel like it's connected with God. That's very discouraging yeah. when it feels like. Oh man, I think I've just riled these people up, and to what end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that those those are very dark Sundays for me. Um, when I feel complicit or like I've really, I I conjured an experience, but I'm not sure exactly how much of the spirit was there. Like, there's times when I kind of feel that way. Yeah, like yeah. I, and uh, I mean, what about you? What what are does that resonate with your experience? Yeah, I, you know, I, music was like my thing. Like I, I've, I was playing, uh, leading worship, and uh, 
I, I, I mean, how does this go to start? I guess we're just going down here. But I'm not, I, I feel very similar to you. Like, I don't play the piano anymore. Like, they ask me to play sometimes, like, uh, yeah, I, I'll play if there's, like, I think the last time I played is that the, the worship leader, his, his uh, he was having a baby, and they had, you know, I had no other choice. I go to a fairly large church, uh, maybe, like, 2,000 uh, people. I don't know. Churches are so large right now, I don't know what is considered large. What's large, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, but... Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, 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 I agree. I feel that, that same way. And it kind of has led me away from from that, to be honest. Led me away from from that. And you know, I feel that way about about church as a whole, to be honest. You know, like well, you know, going back to the conversation that we have earlier, it's just like and again going back to citizens, um, when you like, when you say spending my life on a message, looking around, wondering if I've ever heard it right. It's like this mm. thing that we're trying to create for people each Sunday. Is it more for them or is it for God? Like, and if it's for them, then that's cool. Let's say it's for them. Like, to me, right? Very um, eccentric, smokes, lights, worship is cool. It's not a bad thing, but let's just say it's a Christian concert. There's nothing wrong with going to a Christian concert. It's, I guess it's better right. than going to somebody else's. But let's just call it yeah. that, a Christian concert. Yeah. But when that becomes the only way that we define worship, or that becomes the most preferred way that we call worship, is this Christian mm -hmm. concert. When the way we do church that really yeah. I seek, I think, seeks to, to find a certain people to comfort, and then keep them comfortable, that would be fine. But the fact that that's the only thing we define as church, to me, uh, is, is concerning. And it, it does, it does, it does turn me off. I think about like uh, Peter, and I guess even what you said earlier. Like, I, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been telling my friends. I say on the podcast, like when I find a better alternative to church that allows me to, I don't think people should be at home, a hermit, just reading the Bible. Yeah. I mean, and looking at people on TV. I think, like you said, we need to be fellowship. And I think the thing you do on Friday is amazing. I think there's stuff like that we need to keep doing. I think when I find a better alternative, I'm going to go with the alternative. I just have not found uh, uh, an alternative that um, I think would not be more risk than reward. Um, I, I I have found peace in not trying to reconcile contradictions, though, if that makes sense. Like, mm. I think life, you you just li you live with this tension. You live with this tension of trying to figure it out. Like, I I don't, I, and I, and I'm I'm mm. sure you'll feel me on this. Like, you if you if you grow up in church and and you really desire a real relationship with God, you really see see God, and you study, you kind of feel like okay, I know something. But then you keep going and you keep living, and you realize I don't know anything. Like I don't know. God is way you know, you know I, I don't. He has so many different layers that I don't know and I don't understand. So that has given me not knowing that I don't know Him like I thought I knew him, has given me some type of peace because I can't resolve every contradiction or every tension. But I think that tension helps me stay in a better place than if I felt like mm. I figured it out, if that, if that makes sense. Yes. And so, I, you know, I, I, I feel you. I feel you a thousand. Yeah. I feel you a thousand percent. And I think that's why your music and what you do in this, this, uh, uh, this devotional music, I think it helps people I think it helps people I think sometimes as Christians we do our disservice as trying to qualify the only music that we should listen to as like all Christian music has to be worship music you know what I mean like it all has right. to be like where's the Bible in that you know what I mean like I think there should be a, there can be a variety of ways of expressing your and I'm curious how you feel I don't think music always has to illustrate truth as much I mean it's not a but sometimes it can illustrate or it can express a perspective like this is where I am 
right now. Yes. That, you know. Well, that is illustrating truth, right? right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, the truth of who you are. Yeah. It's like sometimes we, yeah, it doesn't have to illustrate like, it doesn't have to be like the right, this is the right. Yeah. But yeah, that kind of psalmish, like this is reality as I am experiencing it as a subjective person, powerful. I mean, yeah. goodness gracious, when somebody, yeah, it's like that me too moment, right? Mm-hmm. When you're kind of like, oh, wait, I'm not the only one? Like yeah. that's, especially as somebody who's, sounds like we're pretty similar in that introverted, mm-hmm. you know, I have the tendency of always feeling like I'm on the outside of something, mm-hmm. like everybody else gets this thing and I'm kind of, what am I missing here? Mm, mm-hmm. um, to feel seen and heard and, and known, even in your wrongness is, yeah. it's very salvific. You know, you feel very, um, yeah, it can, can really do a lot for you. Yes, yeah, like you said, teach me to fall in the right direction. You know what I mean? I think yeah. that, that is, you know, since I heard that, that has really been my my prayer and kind of like my thought, like uh, help me as I'm walking this tightrope, as I'm walking across this line of tension, help me, you know, if if I fall, let me fall in the right direction, let me fall in the arms of your grace. But, uh, I, I, you know, John, I really appreciate you having this conversation with me. I don't want to uh, wrap you up too much, but I, I guess my, my last question would be, uh, uh, the album has been out for a minute now. Yeah, and I, almost uh, almost two years. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so I'm super late. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought my man, I, feels like it just came out, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like I, I'm uh, right, right as COVID hit. Oh, okay. So it's been it's you, as old as COVID. Are you working on a new project now? I am, man. I am. Yeah, my um, I pretty much pretty much cleared a lot of the schedule for this these next few months up through uh, June. Um, to work on it. Wow. So I've been working on it, kind of stealing hours here and there uh, between everything else I was doing last year and um, this year. I'm kind of saying, I said no to some production projects mm-hmm. earlier in the year so I could I could focus on it. And I'm, um, I'm really excited about about what what the new stuff feels like and what it's saying and... Mm. Um, I'm in such a different place than I was when I was writing the last album. The world is in such a different place. I have a kid now. Mm. We we moved to Texas yeah, well. from Chicago. Um, I'm, you know, I'm just yeah, just trying to trying to figure it out as I go, uh, writing wise. But um, kind of the. Uh, Christ and really like holiness in the ordinary is kind of the the theme. Mm. If I had to find a theme mm-hmm. right now, it's sort of what is what are this what's happening in the secret moments in the quiet moments. Um, a lot of pain in it too. I mean, it's been a hard few years, yeah. and um, I try not to be too uh, you know exhibitionist about it. But um, you know, I think yeah, just trying to be honest at the same time. Yeah. I, I I am looking forward to it. You know, I are you thank you, man. I will be uh, playing it uh, first for soon as I can get it. <laughs> first in line at Virgin Records. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so def- definitely. Sam Goody. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Sam Goody. F Y F was it F Y E for your entertainment? F Y E. That's right. Yeah, no, uh, I, I, it, it is a blessing. I guess. Um, how can people follow you and uh, stay caught up with your music and what you're doing? Yeah. Um, Get stream the music on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon. Uh, I'm on socials, though I've been pretty absent the past few months or whatever. Instagram, um, Facebook. I'm not on TikTok, but hey. see it goes. I'm gonna. My plan is to when I get a little bit further along with the record to um, start becoming a little bit more active on my uh, email list on my new like I'm starting a newsletter okay. where it's a little bit more of an intentional thought driven music driven um expression um instagram it's just yeah it's just kind of hard for me to keep up with it um so yeah no it's 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 always a new thing well all right john i thank you for joining us the shuttery podcast and we are out